Hi everyone, welcome to the Tropic Marin channel. My name is Sam Nietzsche. I'm a researcher at the University of Oldenburg in the beautiful city of Wilhelmshaven. My job in the working group environmental biochemistry is to run the aquarium facility that we have here. There's more videos about the aquarium facility and the research we do. If you want to check it out, it's on this channel. So now we stand in front of our atoll tank, as we call it. Lots of coral, very little water. So it symbolizes kind of how a reef grows in nature. We try to simulate that here. And that brings me to the product that we use in here and that I want to present to you. Phosphate, it's a safe way to deliver phosphate to your corals. In recent years, it became more and more clear how important the phosphate is for the corals, an essential nutrient basically for a healthy coral growth. Without phosphate, you won't get any significant coral growth. In nature, the phosphate is usually supplied by the excrements of fish. They excrete ammonia and phosphates, and these phosphates are often not in a dissolved, but in a particular form, meaning the, the coral takes up particles that contain this particulate phosphate and the phosphate can be used by the coral alone basically. By supplying the corals with a particulate phosphate you circumvent the problem of adding dissolved phosphate which can be used by all sorts of organisms especially algae. So the algae are really happy about dissolved phosphates so it's not only the corals that use them but the algae as well. So if you don't want to promote algal growth, you have the option to deliver the phosphates in a solid form to the corals as a food basically. So the corals take it up and inside the coral it's being utilized and promotes the healthy coral growth. So in tanks that have a very heavy fish stock, the excretions by the fish may be enough to support the corals. In tanks like this that have a lot of coral and very little fish, it's basically uh, impossible to supply the corals with enough phosphate just by feeding the fish. The phosphate allows you to supply your corals with the needed phosphates in a solid form, meaning that you don't add dissolved phosphates uh, which could promote algal growth. So the corals still get the phosphate, but the algae won't. The application of phosphate is really simple. The instructions are also on the can. So you start with a dosage of one milliliter per 200 liters per day. And basically you take the a spoon of that, put it in tank water. So this is water from the, your aquarium or in fact from this aquarium, not yours. You mix it with your water, stir it up, then it's pretty much ready to go. The turbidity and the milkiness, cloudiness of the water, that is by design because the phosphate is in a solid form. It's a particle that is not dissolving. So if you would use dissolved phosphates, the solution would be clear, of course, because it's dissolved. Once it's stirred up, it's ready to go and we just pour it into our tank. And it causes also the milkiness in the tank, of course, because the particles are floating around. They keep in suspension, depending on how many corals and what corals you have about half an hour to an hour, the cloudiness is fully gone. Phosphate should not be overdosed because of course the corals are limited in the amount of the particles they can take up it in a given time. So anything that is not being used by the corals is then available to other organisms. All right, now we know how to apply it. And now we're gonna take a water sample, go to the lab and check if the phosphates are detectable. We miraculously jumped into our chemistry lab together with our water sample. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add the phosphate, stir it up well, and then measure to see if the phosphate is in there. In a second measurement, we're gonna filter out the particles to demonstrate that the phosphate is really just in the particles and it's not going to dissolve in the water. And that's what we're gonna do now because it's an experiment. I'm gonna be quite generous with my dosing. So we just put in a good amount, stir it real well so we can see the cloudiness of the solution. And now we're gonna measure where the phosphate is. Now we have uh, our water sample with the added uh, phosphate. To do the testing, we're gonna use the professional lab and gonna select the phosphate test. The cuvettes, one cuvette and two cuvettes. All right, and the syringe. So now we're gonna take 15 milliliters of our suspension here with the particles, original sample. And now we're gonna take another sample. This time we're gonna put a, a filter, taking out every particle that is bigger than 0 0.2 micrometers. Anything, including bacteria, are being filtered out. So you have to push really hard because the filter is getting clogged by the particles. So now we have our two samples. One is cloudy, one is not cloudy. And now we're gonna 
see how much phosphate is in there. So we're gonna use the reagent A. We add 10 drops in each sample. And if you take a close look, the cloudiness is gone. That means the acid that is in here has dissolved the particles already. That means the phosphate now should be in solution and should be detectable by our test kit. We're gonna add three drops of reagent B in each sample. One, two, three, one, two, three. You can see already it's getting blue pretty quickly, pretty dark. You can see how quickly it reacts. That means the phosphate that was originally as particles is now in solution, whereas the particles that have been removed, it does not have such a reaction. Right? So it's a huge difference in the coloration. The test kit also has the, the chart that shows you how much phosphate is in there. For this experiment, it's not really relevant to actually see what coloration this blue is going to end up. Just by looking at it, uh, it shows you there is a lot of phosphate in there. For the reef tank means that this suspension is not providing dissolved phosphate to algae, basically. So the corals are able to take up suspended particles and then do basically what the test reagent is doing and dissolving it inside the coral. And then the coral itself can, can use the phosphate it's not uh, available to algae, basically. So that's what we could uh, demonstrate. Aside from the FOS feed, there is also FOS Start, which is a product that is specifically designed for uh, new aquarium systems. So in this product, there is uh, marine biopolymers that promote the growth of beneficial bacteria. Basically, sort of a booster for the microbiome of the aquarium system. It's recommended to use uh, this for about three months until everything is uh, nicely developed and then you can switch to the FOS feed. But this can also be applied in a running reef tank. Both. Phosphate and Phosstar contain the solid phosphate particles, but also trace elements and especially halogens like uh, iodine, bromine, fluorine, which is also very important for corals and invertebrates. Thanks for watching. Happy reefing. Keep your corals happy. Mm -hmm.